Hey everyone, Brian Larson from Beyond the Test here, and today we're going to be looking at what to do when you get stuck on a question on the ACT. These are some very useful last minute strategies that you can take advantage of to help improve your score the most. So let's take a look at this. The first thing is um, when you get stuck, you should be saying to yourself, can you use your answer choices to help you solve the question? So a lot of times, um, you know, they'll give you the answers there. So try to use those to your benefit. Uh, number two, can you substitute in for unknown variables or unknown parts of this question? Okay, a lot of these questions have variables or different side lengths that you'll be able to substitute in your own values. They'll make the question a little bit easier. Three, uh, can you graph it? Some of these questions simply provide you with an equation. If you just graph it, you'll get the answer instantly. Um, number four, can you draw a picture? So this is gonna be very useful as you'll see in one of the examples we do here of just being able to visualize things a little bit better to make the questions easier. And finally, five, if there's a diagram, did you fill in all the information possible? Okay, so make sure when you're doing this, you're filling in all the angles, all the different sides. Even if you don't know why you're filling something in, fill it in anyway because it might lead to a discovery later down the road. So let's take a look at some of these examples here. So the first one is that back solving method. It's going to be using our answer choices to help us solve this problem. So 55 here says Carrie and Manuel are side by side when they begin to run at the same time in the same direction around a track. Carrie runs at a constant speed of 30 seconds per lap, while Manuel runs at a constant speed of 50 seconds per lap. So how many seconds after beginning to run will Carrie have run, one, uh, run exactly one more lap than Manuel? Okay, so this is a perfect question to use your answer choices for. So I'm gonna first just identify what the question's saying. How many seconds? So these are my possible seconds. And with those seconds, I wanna know when Carrie will run exactly one more lap. Well, let's go ahead and try this out here. So let's say I started in the middle with choice C. So let's say it had been 75 seconds. Well, if Carrie runs 30 seconds per lap, then in 75 seconds, you could simply just go ahead and take the 75 here. And if you divide it by the 30, that will give you the number of laps that she's already ran, which is 2.5. So in this scenario, Carrie has run 2.5 laps. And then if we go down to Manuel here, and we do the same thing here, if it's been 75 seconds and he runs 50 seconds per lap, if I divide the two, I can see that that would be 1.5 laps in this case. So now you can see Carrie has run exactly one more lap than Manuel has. So very simple to do. Now I know the answer has to be 75 because there's the difference of one. Okay, so using your answer choices definitely will help you to solve this problem. Okay, number two here, we're gonna talk about this substitution method. Basically, if you have variables, substitute in for them as long as you make any equation that holds there true. So for 58 here, it says if x and a are positive rational numbers such that x to the 2a is three, then x to the 6a is what? Okay, so x to the 2a is three. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna choose some values that make that equation true. So I'm gonna start by letting x be equal to three. So I'm gonna change my x here to three. So this becomes three to the 2a equals three. Well, the only way to make this work then is this is like three to the one. So 2a is gonna have to equal one in this case. So if I let 2a equal one, and then I divide by two, I'll get that a is a half. So now I've had my two values that make that equation true. So now I'm gonna go ahead and answer the question with my new values here. I'm gonna take these and substitute them back in to the question. We wanna know then what is the value of x to the 6a? Well, in that case, that would be three to the six times one half and half of six would be three, so this is the same thing as three to the third, and three to the third is 27 in that case. So there would be your answer. All right, um, number three here, can we graph it? 
So if you take a look at this example here, it says which of the following is the graph of the equation 2x plus y equals 4 in the standard xy coordinate plane? Well, they give us the equation here, so this can be very simple to just put into our calculator if you don't understand or remember how to graph functions. Um, but you do have to do one thing first, and since it's a linear equation, you want to get it to look like y equals mx plus b. So right now we have 2x plus y equals 4. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for y by simply subtracting off 2x from both sides. So I'll get y equals a negative 2x and a positive 4. And now I can just simply go to my calculator here. And we're going to go ahead and graph that. The negative 2x and then the positive 4. And if I click uh, graph here, you're going to see, oh, well, look at that. That's answer choice A right off the bat. It's the exact same thing. So very quickly here, you've solved your problem. All right, number four here, can you draw a picture? So let's look at example 60. It says, Mr. Martin wants to plant seven trees evenly spaced along a straight fence that's 300 feet long, with one of the trees at each end of the fence. About how many feet apart should he plant the trees? Okay, so we have this 300 foot fence here, and he's gonna have a tree at each end. So tree number one, and then tree number seven. And then we're gonna have two, three, four, five, six. So tree two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now what we wanna do here is about how many feet apart should you plant the trees? Well, this is the distance apart you should plant them. So I'll call that X. So each one of these will be X in this case. And now you can see, oh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six X's. And the whole line here we said was 300. So 6x equals 300. Finally, divide by 6, divide by 6, and we'll get that x is 50. So each tree should be 50 feet apart in that case. All right, finally, the last method I want to talk about is filling in a picture if there is already one here. So question 60 again here says, as shown in this figure below, a, C, and B, D uh, intersected O. Given that X is between 180 and 360, and that X is equal to 4Y, what is the value of Y? All right, so let's go ahead and fill in our picture here with some things we know. You don't want to just leave this here and try to hope you can come up with something. So right off the bat, I can see that this line here, all the way from there to there is X. And I know that X is the same thing as 4Y. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in. I'm going to fill this in. This whole yellow line then is 4Y. I also know that this angle here is Y right there. So now I'm going to try to think, okay, well, what else can I fill in here? Well, I know back from geometry, if that angle is Y, then the vertical angle across from it's also going to be Y. So this angle right here would also have to be Y as well. And now, as you can see, between that yellow and that green, that forms a complete circle. So I know that in a circle, there's 360 degrees. So if I took that 4y plus that 1y, this whole circle here, we're going to be, or get, I should say, 360 degrees. So 4y plus 1y would then be 5y equals 360. And then the last step divide by 5, divide by 5, and we'll get that y is 72 um, degrees in this case. So the answer choice would be j. And there you have it. So hopefully you'll take advantage of these uh, tips and strategies on the test. Also, um, if you've been in one of my classes, I also know that we've made formula sheets. Please review those formula sheets. Make sure to have those memorized so it doesn't slow you down during the test. All right, good luck everyone, and I hope this helps.